All right, worksheet six, number 10. Um, let's see how you'd work this out. So it tells us the information about the gas, tells us the mass of it, uh, and gives us the uh, volume, the pressure, and the temperature. So we know if we have volume, pressure, and temperature, we can solve for moles. We have mass that, along with that. We can do mass divided by moles to get molar mass. And molar mass would be a pretty decent way to identify uh, an element. So that is, uh, and it also tells us elemental. So we know it's we know it is an element and it's a gas. And that narrows down the elements quite a bit because most of them are not gases at room temperature. So it's probably either hydrogen or nitrogen or oxygen or fluorine or uh, one of the noble gases. And it looks like it's going to end up being helium. So, you know, that, that matches up. Let's see if we can prove that. Um, all right. So... So we're trying to figure out the molar mass or the identity of the element. Uh, gnomes that they gave us. And again, I'm going to go ahead and change um, the temperature into kelvins. Um, all right. So we're going to do PV equals nRT, and we're going to get the number of moles. So that's going to be PV divided by RRT. And then once we have the number of moles, We're going to do molar mass equals grams over moles. All right, so let's solve. Uh, volume is 58.4. And then... Gas constant is 62.4. And the temperature is 275.5 Kelvin. Okay, tours cancel, liters cancel, Kelvins cancel, and then moles in the denominator of the denominator will give me moles in the numerator and the answer. So let's do that. Plug that into my calculator. All right, I got uh, 2.57 uh, for the number of moles. And then we're going to do our grams, which they gave us was 10.3 divided by the number of moles. And we want to do that. I get 4.00 as the molar mass. So if you look at the periodic table, uh, helium is the only diatomic gas that would have, or excuse me, the only gas. Uh, the closest diatomic gas would be um, hydrogen, which has a mass of two. And then nitrogen is the next diatomic gas, and it has a mass of 28. So the helium is the only one that's anywhere close to 4 grams per mole. So that would have to be uh, the answer. All right, let's look at worksheet 5 a little bit. Uh, Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures is covered here, but you also have to combine it with uh, some other concepts to arrive at the correct answers. So uh, first off here, um, we want to know the pressure of the dry, dry gas, so the pressure of oxygen. And the knowns, they tell us uh, 760 uh, tors, is the total pressure, the atmospheric pressure, and uh, the vapor pressure of water at that temperature is 23.8 torr. So 
the plan is we're going to use Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. And then the solve, we will take um, the total pressure, which, which is the atmospheric pressure. And then the oxygen pressure we don't know. And the 23.8 is the vapor pressure of water. And then simply subtract from both sides. to solve for PO2. So PO2 is going to come out to be 736.2, which when rounded to the correct number of significant figures will be just 736. That was easy enough. Let's look at number two. All right, so They tell us the volume of the sample, the temperature, the pressure, and then they ask us what's the volume of the dry gas, the standard temperature and pressure. So there are two things that will take place here. One is we will apply Dalton's law of partial pressures to figure out the dry gas, the pressure of the dry gas, and then out of the 750 uh, torr. And then we're gonna use a combined gas law um, approach to figure out the volume at uh, standard temperature and pressure. So let's do that now. Right. Now to save time and space here, I, I think you can subtract this from that. Uh, so let's Let's just simplify this a little bit. And we know we've got to subtract out the uh, vapor pressure of water to get the pressure of the dry gas. So let's do that. So 750 minus 17.5 gives us 732.5. And that's our initial pressure. All right. Our... Um, P2 and T2 are standard temperature and standard pressure. Standard temperature is 273 Kelvin. Standard pressure is, uh, let's say we want to be a torr, so 760 torr. All right, so very quickly, our Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures question turned into a combined gas law question. So here's our plan. P1, V1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2. And the uh, volume, we're going for the V2. So we would, um, in order to solve for V2, multiply both sides by T2. And divide both sides by P2. All right, and then we would solve. So let's plug in all those values. Uh, T2 is 273. P1 was uh, 732.5. Um, Tor. And V1 was uh, 0.032 liters. And then we're going to divide by the P2, which is about 760. And the T1, which is 293. So I'll put those in my calculator. Notice the tors and the kelvins all cancel out and leave us with liters. So I worked that out and I got uh, 0 0.0287 liters, which would convert to 28.7 milliliters. Uh, which, by the way, I didn't have to convert to liters to begin with. Um, all right, number three is identical in uh, process to number two, so I'm not going to work that out again. I will work out uh, number four. 
and number five for you. All right, so number four. Um, you might notice that another way you can write out um, Dalton's law of partial pressures is that the mole fraction, the moles of the gas, over the total moles times the total pressure equals the moles of whichever gas. So let's apply that to number four. All right, so unknown here is uh, the pressure of each gas and then I'm going to list out all of these individual amounts of gases. And the total while I'm here, uh, five plus five, so 14 moles total. And P total is uh, 800 torr. Now, if we apply that equation that uh, So moles of gas X over total moles times pressure, total pressure equals the pressure of gas X. So we're going to apply that to this situation. Let's do that in our solve. So first for hydrogen, there's two moles of hydrogen, and there's 17 moles total, and the total pressure is 800 torr, and that will give us 2 divided by 17 times 800. Snap, I used the wrong number, 14. So 2 divided by 14 times 800. That gives us 114. We'll repeat that. So Ammonia is, uh, or excuse, yeah, ammonia is going to be 3 divided by 14 times uh, 800. And then we'll carry that on. Uh, carbon dioxide is 4 out of 17 times 800. I keep saying 14, sorry. I don't know where I'm getting the 17 from, but nonetheless. And then the last one, the... Uh, Nitrogen is going to be 5 out of 14 times 800. All right, and those will come out to 171, uh, 229, and 286. And just to check ourselves, we could add those up to make sure they add up to um, 800. And they do add up to 800, so it checks out. All right, so that's how that one works. All right, number five is supposed to tell you that the total pressure is 760, but it's cut out over here. So again, we're going to use the uh, mole fraction uh, equation to solve for this. All right, so we set up this equation. Um, and then what you have to realize is that the mole fraction is this quantity. It's the fraction of the moles of F2 out of the total. And move PT over 